Guess what I found the other day? Don't guess. I'm going to tell you. I found two rolls of jersey knit fabric, $4 each. There are two yards in each roll, but then once I get up to the register, they rang up at $2 a piece. Also, same day, I bought a package of bagels. Usually there are supposed to be four in each package. There were five. Big day. And you may be thinking, oh, such good fortune. You should go to the casino. I would never, ever voluntarily enter a place with that many people. Mm -mm. So what does any of that have to do with today's project? <laughs> I'm going to make an apron. An apron like the one in my last video, but not exactly the same because I had less fabric to work with. But first, a little fresh air. So self-indulgent. A little cold. After that fresh air, I was able to set to work. The fabric was a remnant I acquired from the thrift store. It was a silvery gray fabric masquerading as linen. Here's my professional looking sketch written on the back of an old calendar page. So I have a yard and 17 inches at 44 inches wide, which is just one inch shy of one and a half yards. So close. My hope here is to use up all of the fabric in the most clever way possible so that I have absolutely no scraps left over. Except for these, of course, which I trimmed off the edge of the fabric, straightening it out. Sort of straightening it out, to the best of my ability. So the issue that I have run into is there's not enough fabric to make this apron. Well, there is, but there isn't. Usually for the front or the bib of the apron, you're going to have two pieces, and then you just kind of face them together. But if I do that, I won't have enough fabric to make pockets. I'm sorry, that was like super dramatic. Um, what I was going to say was I did figure out a way to do pockets. I'm just gonna have to sort of kind of cheat a little. So pockets will happen. You can come out now. I am so sorry for that scare. I did not mean to be so dramatic. We will have pockets. So essentially all I will have to do is instead of having two pieces of the same fabric for the bib of the apron, I will simply have one that will be seen, and then the one on the inside, I'll just have to use a different fabric. So I split that other front piece into the pocket pieces, but I also realized that my straps were not going to be long enough, so I needed to add some strap extensions. From the remaining fabric, I was able to cut out two little rectangles that I could later add onto the straps. So then I just started measuring and duplicating that paper sketch onto the piece of fabric in chalk, and then proceeded to cut all along those lines, hoping I did the arithmetic correctly. As I mentioned before, this apron is going to be a little bit different than the black apron. As with many of my projects, because I mostly thrift fabrics, what I do is based on the amount of fabric that I have. I allow the fabric to be my guide. In this case, the apron will be shorter and have a little less gather. If you are making this apron, you can absolutely make it longer or fuller if you like, and if you have more fabric. It's kind of a metaphor, actually, now I think about it, for how I like to do things on this channel. Specific instructions with specific measurements are all well and good at times, but how are they helpful if I don't know what you have to work with? You may have less, you may have more, I don't know. So what I like to do is say, this is what I do, and here's why, and let you adjust according to yourself, your situation, assets, and abilities, etc. For determining dimensions, I just copied my black apron. But since I didn't film that process, here is a reenactment of how I figured out how to make the black apron. I just took a measuring tape, figured out where I wanted the top of the bib to be, and where I wanted it to hit my waist, and then how wide I wanted it to be, and then just added one inch to each of those measurements for seam allowance, giving me a half inch seam allowance on each side. Same with the waistband, really, I just figured out where I wanted it to end, and how tall I wanted it to be, and then just added one inch to the length and one inch to the width for seam allowance. For the length of the apron, I just measured from my waist down to where I wanted the apron to end. It's kind of difficult to see them because it kind of blends in with the mat, but here are all the pieces. You've got the ties, and then these are the straps, and then little pieces I had to cut out to extend them. The waistband pieces, the pockets, yay, and the bib. And now I have to cut out a back bib, the lining of the bib. Those are all of the pieces except for the skirt piece. I dug into my little bin of scraps to find something for the bib backing. I duplicated the bib front onto a scrap of white fabric and a piece of interfacing. Then it was time for the pockets. I just pressed under all the edges a teeny tiny bit and another turn under just a little bit bigger this time for the top edge. I stitched along the top edge only at this point. To figure out the pocket placement, I placed the measuring tape upside down from where the waistband would be and slipped my hand into an imaginary pocket. I took note of where my fingertip landed and that would be where the bottom of the pocket would sit. 
I like to do this step before I gather the skirt. It's easier for me to manage a flat piece instead of contending with a gathered up piece, but you can always do it after if you prefer. I measured from the waist down to where my fingertips would end, and there I placed the pocket bottom. I stitched all along the edges except for the top. Then I did a similar thing on a larger scale by turning under all of the edges of the apron except for the top. Time for some straps. To figure out the strap length, I found where the top of the apron would land and flipped the measuring tape around to the back, measuring from that point. And since it was a cross back apron I was making, I crossed it across my back to meet the imaginary waistband. And that was my measurement for the straps, which I was just a tiny bit short on, hence the extensions. With extensions added, I folded the strap piece in half, stitched along the edge, creating a tube that I could turn inside out. I repeated the process on another strap because I needed two. And I also repeated the process on the ties. Same exact thing, right sides together, stitch, turn out, and press. And then finish one edge of each of the four tubes, which I could have done before turning it right side out, but it does make it a little more difficult for me to turn out with a loop turner, so I usually just finish the edge afterward. Personal preference. Now for the bib, or front, if you prefer that word over bib. Stack those rectangles right sides together and sew along the sides. Take the straps and sandwich them in the middle, pushing them tight into their corners at the top edge. Pin them in place and sew along that top edge. Don't forget to clip the corners and then turn it right side out. For the waistband, I pressed one edge under a seam allowance. Then I sandwiched the front of the apron bottom in between the two waistband pieces. I stitched across the edge but left the ends open because that's where the ties would snuggle in. Snuggle said ties into the waistband sandwich and stitch into place. Clip the corners and flip it right side out. This is what the apron looks like so far and it is almost finished. Now it's time to attach the skirt. Set the machine to the longest stitch and run two rows of stitching along the top edge of the skirt and pin it along the unpressed edge of the waistband. Gather it to fit and stitch into place. Hand stitching time. Flip that waistband with the pressed edge over to meet the stitching line and hand stitch into place. The apron is almost finished. All that remains is to attach the straps to the waistband. And normally here I would insert a button and buttonhole, and then you can make it. Adjustable. However, I do not have any buttons that will work for this particular apron. So I am going to just go ahead and tack it into place. And then I will add the buttons and buttonholes later. What I'm going to do is actually put it on myself to get a better fit because I'm not, we're not exactly the same size. 